Hello, right. Here. Oh. Here we have my presentation. Got to stop moving the table um, because uh, what will happen is it'll be picked up on the microphone. But um, this is our second lecture of the development of the USA from 1930 to Um What I'm going to attempt to get you guys through today is, and I think for the best, is just to give you a little description of what happened between um, the years that we are looking at and unfortunately Roosevelt, uh, FDR, or Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he suddenly dies um, on the 12th of April in 1945. Um, as you can remember, he came up with the New Deal. He defeated uh, Herbert Hoover in the um, 1932 elections, and he became president. Um, and on the 12th of April, 1945, he suddenly dies because of a brain hemorrhage. Uh, the artist, this is a quite a poignant picture here, because the artist was painted him. Um, during the day and he complained of a headache um, to which point he retires to bed and he really suddenly and very rapidly his health deteriorates and he passes away um, so unfortunately uh, for Franklin Delano Roosevelt his family and ourselves he won't be playing any part in the 1945 onwards era of American history. Anyway, if we move on, do you know this president? Uh, this is, if you haven't got it already, this is Harry S. Truman. Um, and he's sworn in after um, the death of FDR, uh, become the 33rd president. So hopefully you can do your maths and work out that uh, Roosevelt was the 32nd and Herbert Hoover being the 31st, and of course we go back. As we go on through these lectures, you'll hear, and I'll try and identify so that we can put them into some sort of order, the presidents. Um, just to give an overview of Harry S. Truman, um, he wants to create uh, a new deal as well, uh, or rather he wants to continue FDR's new deals. Um, he believes that... Um, he can continue to make uh, America prosperous by strong belief in democracy. Uh, he is a democratic president, um, and uh, we can we can kind of see this as 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 you can see here. He's saying every segment of our population and every individual has a right to expect his government uh, to provide a fair deal, or you know. Not necessarily, I kind of paraphrase that. But um, as you can see, uh, as I've tried to explain in the, the last lecture, the best way to identify the Democrats uh, from the Republicans is the Democrats uh, expect or believe that those in power should look after those who don't have the power. Whereas your Republican, uh, Herbert Hoover was a Republican, and he believes in this sort of self-help. Uh, as you know, it's rugged individualism. Um, and throughout the, 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 uh, the polit political parts of America, you will see, because America is a two-party um, nation, uh, of Democrats and Republicans, uh, you'll see how it'll swing back and forth, how Republicans will come in and they tend to um, do a lot for the, uh, the the already rich, whereas the Democrats uh, will, will kind of aim to provide a more of a, a social, social welfare and social reforms. But moving quickly on, um, Harry S. Truman here, he takes over from... Um, uh, sworn in after Roosevelt's sudden death and what we see here is really uh, someone someone who is trying to continue uh, Roosevelt's um, work but also upsetting the Republicans and trying to create a better society um, 
in which we will see later on when we, when we look at the other presidents, uh, such as Kennedy and Johnson, um, that the, those two are, are Democrats and they believe that the um, the, the the country should, you know, the the. The strong should defend the weak, okay? Uh, whatever your political stance is on that. But it's just kind of being able to identify uh, and make that kind of simple for you guys to understand. Um, the Harry S. Truman, uh, another little bit of pub trivia, is the S in Harry S. Truman actually stands for nothing at all. It is just an, an S. It, uh, it isn't the beginning of a name. Um, his father and his grandfather uh, both had middle names which begin with the S. And if I'm entirely honest with you, I, I can't remember those offhand. But uh, that S is just put in there as a little tribute to his heritage, um, or his lineage, rather. Okay, he's also the president that drops the bomb, um, and that's the atomic bomb. Uh, by that, I mean the atomic bomb. And this is... Uh, in 1945, the Second World War is still going on, and what you have is Roosevelt had already given the green light to, um, to commence work on... Um, Atomic warfare, and this is this is um, you know kept undercover from the public, and it's secretly uh, developed, um, given the code name the Manhattan Project. Okay, and it's the first time really that the Americans now are. I mean, this is, this is significant. You'll, you'll see what happens if you don't know it already, um, how this story works out. But um, this is the first time that that atomic energy is being used um, for weaponry um, you know um, Russia hasn't got this no, no other country has the atomic bomb and Truman faces the immediate um, and, and, and massively huge decision of, of whether he should or shouldn't drop the first atomic bomb um, I'm sure you would be aware that that did take place um, here we see the Enola Gay the name of the, um, the the plane that actually carried and um, deposited the bomb over uh, Hiroshima in Japan in the area. Yeah. Um, some advisors did believe that Little Boy, that's the name of the of the first atomic bomb that was dropped. Um, Little Boy, I think I got I, I try and get a photo in there somewhere for you. Um, they, they do believe it should have been dropped somewhere harmless as a, as a sort of threatening or cautionary um, warning to, to the Japanese that we do have this uh, immense and, you know, annihilating weaponry um, and give them a chance to surrender. However, it is dropped upon a populated um, town or city, rather, of known as Hiroshima. Um, the effects of this are completely devastating. Um, and the aftermath of Hiroshima, uh, there are 80,000 people, uh, which are civilians, which are massacred, entirely wiped out um, during this, this attack. 90% uh, of the population were killed. Um, 10 of you in the class, 9 of you are gone. Simple as that. That's, 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 uh, and tens of thousands would die uh, after the dropping of uh, Little Boy due to the radiation poisoning and the exposure. Um, they, they weren't really told about the effects of radiation. Um, so you see a long, drawn out, painful way for a lot of those Japan, uh, Japanese civilians. Um, by that, mothers, sisters, brothers, children, uh, the aged, um, all suffered and eventually would, would pass away because there was no, no cure for the radiation poisoning. Um, just to put it on scale, here's, a, here's an overview, or bird's eye view rather, of the um, Hiroshima. And as you can see, it's completely leveled. If we look at, if we take uh, these to be the actual um, residencies, houses, uh, institutes, schools, um, everything is totaled when that picture is taken. Um, so you can understand how atomic war is a terrifying and just just a just a world destroying thing there. Um, 
But believe it or not, that was not the only bomb that was dropped. And it wasn't the smallest. Um, three days later, Fat Boy is the second atomic bomb which is dropped by America onto Nagasaki this time. Um, and this is six days after that event on the 14th of August. Uh, Japan's emperor broadcast his agreement to the Allies terms of surrender. Um, so they, they surrender and that, um, that war then uh, is over. But we do face something uh, later which is in the, the Pacific. Um, th this is, uh, I suppose, to, to refer to the box set, the DVDs, um, to keep it simple, uh, you would have Band of Brothers would be your first, uh, sorry, your second world war, and then the Pacific is a continuation, in a way, of, um, of the second world war, but fought for different, different reasons, and to really take the, the Japanese out, um, as, as any sort of powerful nation, um, Okay, again, complete devastation. Um, similar, uh, similar conditions after an atomic bomb is dropped there with the, with the radiation poisoning. Complete flattening of the ground. Uh, 40,000 people are killed this time. They were aiming for a different destination. Um, I believe that might have been Tokyo. Uh, it was because it was a cloudy... Um, day that they, they couldn't really um, reach their target which they had proposed and um, as you can see a third of the city was destroyed and the final death toll was calculated after you added the radiation poison to 50,000 uh, huge huge loss of life there's fat boy sorry fat man um, that's the name of the the second bomb um, again you 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 just got to stop the feel um, these these sort of measures that, that went about to to, uh, to stop or to, to bring Japan out of out of the Second World War. Um, it's just it's just something to contemplate. Anyway, the consequences of America um, being part of the Allies and winning the the Second World War against uh, Germany, against Japan, and, uh, and, and Italy, um, or the Axis, as, as they are known, uh, really can be brought to light here because we can see that America becomes um, very, very rich off the Second World War. It really does. It, um, it, it mass produces the weapons and uh, Britain gets into a lot of debt. Um, because it is supplying the other countries. It is the only country, in fact, that uh, is better off. Um, similar to the First World War, it's better off. Uh, war brings a lot of business to America, and the economy is stronger. Okay? Um, and as I said, only in the U.S. were people better off than before the war. Uh, banks then really do become the global bankers of the world, um, and they can help the you know, the, the de help with the devastation. Certainly they turn their eyes to Germany. Um, we'll go into that later in the lecture series because this is where, um, and I'd rather go into more detail, but let's just say that the, the, the winners, uh, which are your British, your French, um, your Russians and your Americans, they, they do carve up um, Berlin, okay, in certain parts of Europe um, to... Uh, if you remember in the German lectures, it's uh, there's a process of denazification, first of all. Um, but what you have here are the two ide ideologies meet where you have democracy with America and um, you have the um, communism um, from, remember, this is Stalin's era of leading Russia. Uh, another consequence is that the USA had now a new powerful role in world affairs. Um, they really did. I mean, they they are the ones that have the atomic bomb. Um, so there's always that kind of um, hint at holding quite a firm sense of power and, and obviously not being afraid to use that type of weaponry really sort of um, made all of the world realize how powerful a nation they had become 
and perhaps how ruthless they could be. Um, so, because America had fought in the Second World War in different locations all around Europe and, and other places such as the Pacific, um, we see that America's naval and, and air force bases are now spread around uh, the globe. So, um, you can, and as we say, as, as they move in and they carve up certain sectors of Berlin um, and Austria, um, you'll see that um, Americans, America, America's power uh, or involvement into other other worlds, uh, other countries, sorry, affairs uh, grow stronger and stronger. This is almost, um, if you've seen, um, oh, what's the South Park? Uh, what is it? America. Help me out with this one, Brad. Not a clue. Not a clue. Um, anyway, the US, I'll get back to that one. Um, Team America, of Team America, of course, with the, with the puppets, and they, they are they are policing the world. America polices the world, yeah. Uh, so they get involved in all sorts of things on on the on the different continents, whether it's Europe or in other parts of the world. There, um, they do set up the United Nations with its headquarters in New York to sort of keep an eye on the rest of the world. Another consequence we can think of is the technology that the war has brought. Um, the needs of war in any war, there is, all, there is always going to be advancements, whether it's in medicine, whether it's in transport, communication or weaponry or science, um, because this is where um, necessity is the, is the mother of all invention. And it really is a case of, um, as I told you, um, perhaps you guys in one of my previous lectures um, it's why we basically have the mobile phone and our mobile phones have the internet and um, we'll go into the how the internet internet came about in a, in a, in a later lecture um, and it's through this kind of cold war um, that, that 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 the internet does come about just to give you the answer there but you can see that America's companies um, are ahead of any competitors in the world certainly ahead of Britain France I mean Britain and France are in a lot of debt to America um, and America just becomes this face of uh, modern advancement, you know, um, certainly ahead ahead of everything else in um, in modernity, in um, in aspects of progression. Okay, so America is recognised as being this superpower in it, in in essence, yeah. And still is. Uh, America's role in liberating countries conquered by Hitler created enormous admiration and gratitude from their peoples. Um, again, Hollywood films are produced to publicize this, um, certainly popular music, and many new consumer products made America's apparently comfortable lifestyle the envy of people in countries where there was very, very great hardship after the war. Um, so, as much as they seem to have emancipated um, certain people's plights in parts of perhaps Holland, um, I mean, I'm talking about um, the, the the liberation of, of Europe as the as the Americans kind of fight their way, and well, the Allies rather fight their way. Um, America does get um, the kudos because it makes sure that it publicizes that. Not, I'm not saying that any other country didn't at the time. Uh, but it it has the, the the rights to Hollywood, so you know Hollywood makes great films, and they can really. Um, I mean, if you watch any um, any World War Two movies, um, it, it comes from the perspective of America did win the war. It did it did certainly contrib contribute um, to the. Um, to the winning of the war with, with all of the armament it, it, it produced and, and supplied, um, you know, the transport and, and the food. I'm not, uh, I know I'm not going to say anything about that. It, it, uh, we, we wouldn't have won without, uh, without what, without, the, without food and without supplies and without weapons but um, if you can compare the loss of life from uh, your country of America to or your nation of America to Russia um, I think it's, uh, it, it, it's it's completely and absolutely uh, incomparable um, 
I think more men actually die uh, on the road um, in car accidents than, than the actual total of loss of life in, in the Second World War. However, those are the consequences of America, um, with the help of the Allies, winning um, the Second World War. And it's a filler in there for you just to um, bear in mind. We will go into certain parts in depth, maybe later in other lectures in, in the class. But for this um, enjoyable lecture, which has been broadcast to you on YouTube, thank you to my son's suggestion, um, we leave that as lecture two. Uh, after total war comes total living. Part one, we'll call this, and I will see you in part two, where we shall discuss what America did with its prosperous and affluent um, gains from winning the Second World War. Thank you very much. Um, I'll see you in lecture two, part two.